In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. The primordial form of the universe is consciousness. Consciousness is the original basis of reality. Wherever consciousness is, there is reality also. There can never be one without the other, and one can never be known without the other. Consciousness without matter is pure chaos, and matter without consciousness is pure chaos. In the beginning the world was without form and void, simply pure consciousness without content and without intent. All matter emerges out of consciousness. All energy emerges out of consciousness. Everything begins as idea, idea in the mind of the all, the mind of God, the mind from which all things emerge and of which all things are a part. Each of us are a small reflection of the whole. We are all made in its image, the image of the creator, and we each have a small amount of power to influence and determine reality. Focus determines reality. Focused intent changes reality. Ideas direct focus, changing reality. All memes are ideas, and all ideas are memes. Memes determine focus of many minds at once. He who controls the memes controls the universe. The ancients knew this, and so understood that control of the true stories, the narratives about which people frame their lives, was essential to the control of reality. That was the purpose of all early religions, to keep people aligned to one simple view of the world. Even today, control of the narrative is essential to control of the people. However, the nature of consciousness is not control. It is chaos. For out of chaos, all creativity emerges. The ancients understood this too, and had a name for this phenomenon. And that name was Kek, the primordial god of chaos. What is Kek? Kek represented rebellion, a return to disarray against any falsely imposed order. Depicted in the form of a frog, his image implies radical transformation. Just as a frog transforms throughout its life cycle from an inert egg to fish, and then to an amphibian able to live in the three elemental worlds of water, air, and earth. He embodied the time of darkness that comes before the radical transformation of the dawn and was understood to be the bringer of light, the light of consciousness, which destroys the uniform illusions of the night. The wise men of the past knew that Kek was a potentially dangerous threat to the order of civilization, so sought to appease him in various ways to maintain a status quo. The appeased version of Kek was called Kuk, a neutered and less potent manifestation that could be temporarily contained. However, this was understood to be at best a temporary measure, since chaos always triumphs over order ultimately, as part of the never-ending cycle between the two. The rulers of the current year have forgotten this ancient truth and in their arrogance have assumed that their control and dominance will last eternally, from now until forever. But their arrogance is their weakness, since the chaotic nature of the universe can only be ignored for so long before it makes its essential presence felt again. Why did Keck return? And so it is today, in a time of uniform political order, that Keck has emerged again. Out of the far dark reaches of the internet, beyond the radical fringe, in places where minds and means still roam free without abandon, away from repressive restraints of suffocating censorship, Keck returned. At first in a form unrecognized, and yet still instantly loved by all who saw him, he showed his seemingly innocent face, harmless to begin with, and so sweet as to be almost unnoticed. His image spread from the birthplace of chaos into the hearts and minds of people everywhere known to all, and feared by none. Only later did the unpredictable and menacing side of this figure begin to become apparent. An apparition of never-ending laughter with a self-contented and more disconcerting face became known. The smug grin of the winner and the hint of something cruel, but by then it was too late. The frog was out of the box. The ancient god was unleashed and had taken form in the world a form which had the power to topple the corrupt status quo, unleashing possibilities 
outside of their decaying and corrupt control. What does all this mean for us? It means a time of unstoppable chaos is upon us, and nothing can be done to prevent it. Yet with this unpredictability, there is great potential for those who can align themselves with the changing nature of reality and find the light of truth that comes with the promise of Keck. The old orders of the past are crumbling, and with their decline something new and as yet unknown will appear. It also means humanity can no longer slumber in the night of unconsciousness while a suffocating political order conspires to keep us asleep because the dawn is already upon us. The re-emergence of Keck has invigorated the minds of the awakened masses and their abilities to shape the words of which the world is made, to control the means, and in so doing direct the focus of the collective consciousness and alter the fabric of reality itself. The discovery of memes and their power to change world events is a resurgence of our innate magical ability to reshape the world with focused intent away from those that would control it for their own advantage and return power to the ever creative impulses of the chaotic universe itself as Keck would have it and as his return signals. Focus determines reality. Focused intent changes reality. Ideas direct focus, changing reality. All memes are ideas and all ideas are memes. Memes determine focus of many minds at once. He who controls the memes, controls the universe. And the beginning was the meme, and the meme was God, and the meme was with God.